the tripod so the angle is slightly <laughs> different today fingers crossed um and i am sitting in the loft where it is incredibly windy so hopefully audio wise you can hear me and uh, that's that's okay for everybody give us a, a flag in the comment box if if it's becoming difficult i'll see what i can do about that but um it's me kicking things off today isn't it it is yes because yes. Uh, okay. I it was your turn really it's only fair Okay, um, well, yeah. Oh, we introduce ourselves? Again. I haven't, I haven't in actually introduced ourselves, have we? In case people Let's are watching. Because we know each other. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Rebecca Jones, and I work for the charity National Energy Action. This is my colleague, Gareth, and what we do is give energy advice to people all over the country, basically. Would you say that was about mm -hmm. right, Gareth? Yeah, I'd say in a nutshell. <laughs> that was that was it. It gets a bit more complex, doesn't it? Yeah, and and yeah. hopefully that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. If you're not familiar with NEA, um, you're following us on Instagram, so we assume you may, may know who we are. But for more information, obviously go and check our website out about our current campaigns, the advice work and, and the other work that we're involved in all around tackling and, and hopefully ending fuel poverty. In today's session, again, it's under the banner of the Warm Welcome Project. So thank you if you are joining us uh, and you're a, a new parent or an expectant parent and you've got babies and young people running around you at the moment. I know what that's like. So we really appreciate your, your uh, efforts in joining us for this brief uh, Instagram live session, which is going to hopefully provide some energy advice tips and some key things you can take away um, in what are currently varying, very worrying times. Isn't that right, yeah. Rebecca? Yeah, very much so. Uh, uh, the clients I'm talking to at the moment are all very concerned about these uh, price rises that are due at the beginning of April. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Just a reminder, mm -hmm. we often miss comments um, because we're too busy talking. So you can ask us a question in the questionsy bit down the bottom, down there somewhere. <laughs> and we'll, we'll come to those at the end of the session. I mean, obviously still wave. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's nice. <laughs> and we're also going to post this up on our YouTube channel after um, the end of the session as well. So if you have to leave halfway through or there's something that we talk about that you, you want kind of go over again there'll be an opportunity to watch it there and to I imagine leave comments and, and get in touch with us through that channel as well um, again this is something that's kind of a bit of a new foray for us we normally go into communities and give advice to people one to one or in groups and that's been challenging to do throughout the pandemic so breaking new ground um, and, and hoping that you do bear with us while we get to grips with it but yeah your comments and your questions are really what make those sessions we want to understand what the worries are the focus today is on, since our last session, there's been the announcement of the, of the price cap. And what it basically means is a price increase in energy costs. And unless, you, you know, you've been un under a rock for the past couple of weeks, there's been a lot of news coverage. And naturally, it, it is a very worrying time because it's not just energy that's rising. Um, other costs are going up and people yeah. are suddenly thinking, what are we going to do? And we're talking about things in the context here of staying safe and warm at home, which with the wind blowing uh, and the drafts coming through this loft at the moment, I can tell you is something that I'm, I'm thinking about right now and all the time. So um, what we're not going to do is go too jargon heavy, hopefully, but it is quite technical. So um, the price cap is something that's set by Ofgem, who is the industry regulator for the energy market. Um, they do this twice a year, so they put it up, um, it will come into effect on April the 1st, and in a nutshell, um, it means that people on default tariffs, that's also called a standard, standard variable tariff, it's, it's the tariff that most households in the UK are on, to be honest with you, unless you've gone onto a fixed tariff. Um, recently, you're likely to be on a standard tariff. And even if you've been on a, a fixed tariff before, those come to an end. So unless you've changed to another fixed tariff, you most likely just bumped onto a standard tariff with your supplier. So it's worth checking that out first. And obviously there's certain things that apply to certain households here. It's very broad advice that we give. So those people on standard variable tariffs, paying via direct debit, are going to see an increase of £693 per year. Um, people using prepayment meters, so card and key, 
metres are going to see an increase of £708. Now, so, those are based on averages. So, yeah, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. It's a bit too precise, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Okay. It's very precise, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so the key thing to remember here is that these are based on average. I'm not going to go into it. It's something called the t- typical domestic consumption value. It's kind of based <laughs> on an average household, but okay. I, I don't think we need to concern ourselves today. What we're going to look at, hopefully, are some examples of actual use and what this means in, in very real terms. Because so the I'm, averages are based on things like where you live. Yeah, go on, sorry, Rebecca. I'm just going to say, I get really confused about what the price cap actually means. So does the price cap actually mean that the energy companies can't charge you over a certain amount per unit of gas and electricity? Or is it to do with your direct debit? I don't, what's, is that, it's about the, it's about the unit cost, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, the yeah. price is the cap on the unit cost of gas and electricity. So while they're saying these bills could rise by, by so much, it's, it's very much dependent on how people use energy. But for, from the supplier's perspective, that's the limit to the amount they can charge per unit. Uh, okay, okay. And it's, so that's- it's higher than, yeah. It is confusing. It, mm-hmm. it is, you know, you... Uh, we've all been there we you get signed up to a direct debit you're paying so much a month you think that's what you you is covering you and then you get hit with a bill Uh, and i think this is what we're hopefully going to cover is that there's information that you have at your disposal that can help kind of prepare for that and understand what it is you're paying paying for but the key thing to remember is yeah absolutely is the unit price of gas and electricity has changed it's now gone up and that means that based on your previous use, your prices is likely to, to rise because okay. the unit cost has gone up. But it does, it does hinge on how you use energy and we'll cover that in a, in a couple of minutes time. I said it was gonna be a whistle stop tour, but we could talk <laughs> about this stuff for quite a lot of time. This is meant to be a kind of overview and obviously you know, the, the key message across any, anyone involved in the energy industry at the moment is if you are worried, And if you are concerned or you want more information is first and foremost to contact your supplier and have a chat with them about what the cost increase means. They'll be able to give you information about your your costs based on actual use, not projections. You know, it's about understanding and getting that support in place. And we'll have a look at some of the other places you can go to for support right at the end. Um, So the unit price rise, if you're interested, is 28p and again this is you know um to the nearest pence for a typical energy user paying a direct debit we're not going to go into the unit cost for ppms today i think we could do that on another session about prepayment meters in general um but it's going to rise to 28 pence per kilowatt hour for electricity so and that's seven unit. pence so that's like each little unit of electricity unit. for anybody who's yeah a kilowatt, it's hour, a kilowatt it's hour yeah okay it's the way energy is measured um, again, we could get into that in much, much more detail. <laughs> but I think um, most people, yeah. I, I would, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 10 minutes, how much information can you fit in? Um, let's talk about it in terms of pounds and pence, isn't it? But the, yeah. the gas is the, is the one that is the huge shock because um, it's gone up to seven pence per kilowatt hour. And that's, in some cases, nearly double what it was this time oh, okay. um, last year and that's where people are really worried and that's what we're worried about in context of of having young people in the household um you know is about keeping warm it's winter we want to try and keep warm. what are we going to do now these costs are, are increasing that's a huge huge issue for for many people who might be in um in households where uh you know the challenges are trying to heat them because the property is inefficient or or down to income yeah. so um again everyone's household is different so I thought it might be useful for us to do some really sort of r- rough maths <laughs> based yeah. on on that average we mean rough because yeah, we are do fans rough. of maths <laughs> Lo- love a bit of maths <laughs> on a Friday afternoon but you know it's useful it, all of this information is available to you if you're someone like me who maybe shies away from that um you know, don't just don't just get a bill and be shocked. Um, come April the first, try and have a look and work with your supplier or access support from 
um, other services to, to understand what these figures mean and what the impacts will be before you know before you just get lumped with a bill that's that's more expensive so um, and hopefully what I'm going to suggest is that there's other things you might be able to do and other things you might be able to access to help with those costs here as well so you know again talking about averages and things I'm going to talk about my um, set up so I live in a terraced house there's three of us here in, including my two and a half year old daughter um, you know it's a Victorian built property it's not particularly well insulated it's um, quite drafty as I kind of already mentioned especially on a, on a hundred mile an hour windy day um, so there's challenges there in, in, in keeping the heat in and that has an impact on my costs. So I um, had a look at my bill from um, November to January. So, so last month's you know, quarterly bill, if you like. And my supplier was charging me £130.80 for gas. So you know, coldest months of the year, it's kind of a rough idea of how much it's costing me. That was based on the unit cost of gas being 3.98. So, you know, it's jumped up now. From the April, April oh, that, the 1st, it's going yeah, to be twice. Yeah, that's quite, seven quite dramatic, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's, it is yeah. dramatic, but, but let's break it down. It's going to be, say I use the same amount of energy mm. next November to January, because it's this kind of property, and there's three of us here. It's likely. Um, these things can go up and down. But it gives me an idea that actually the new cost w might be £246.19. And it's £106 more expensive um, th than the bill I've had. Of course, there's a lot of variables in there, but that gives me a bit of an idea. So I'm suddenly going to have to come up with another £100 um, for that bill in, in, yeah. in that time, time scale. Yeah. And, so you know, it, it is worrying. That's a bit, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it gives me an idea of, you know, what can I do to uh, stave off that worry? You know, what action can I take? Um, I'm... In a way, lucky I had a new boiler over Christmas because I was broke on Christmas <laughs> Eve. I don't think that is lucky. But that boiler is, you know, is more efficient. So I would hope that that will help me get that heating Absolutely. throughout the house. Might maybe kind of balance out your costs a little bit as, as well as yeah, uh, you know, yeah. potentially making other energy saving changes around your home as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Things like draft proofing and, and insulation. Um, and of course, this is, I'm talking about my experience here, obviously, everybody is different. And it's really important to remember that if you're in um, private let tenancy, or, or in social housing, that there's, there's things that you can do with your landlord to get access to those improvements. And, um, you know, depending on your income and your circumstances, there's, there's funding available to make those improvements. And that's going to ultimately have, you know, be better for you in the long term in terms of cost in the property. You know, I know you speak to so many people throughout the, the, the course of the week who, who are faced with that, but there, there are things you can do. Definitely. I mean, even um, a simple other day, saving people, tips. Sorry, I was just going to say draft proofing. <laughs> Quite, a, you know, one of the easiest things that you can do yeah. yourself. Even I can do it, and I'm mm -hmm. incompetent with a hammer. Uh, I'm, I won't even show you my thumbs. Um, but yeah, a draft proofing is a really simple thing to do. You can get just rolls of this spongy stuff. You can either get it online or go to B and Q or other DIY stores are available. Obviously. Uh, and just stick it around the inside of your window and it'll, it just creates a better seal. Um, you know, particularly if, you know, like, like our, sub, our bathroom window double glazing seals seem to go all the time. Um, I don't want to keep bothering the landlord and getting somebody around to do them. So we'll just stick some stuff around the edge of it. Bob's your uncle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thinking about this kind of low cost and in some cases, no cost measures that you can take around those things is great. Um, we're thinking about the electricity cost as well, because obviously that, that unit cost has risen too. Yeah. What would you suggest to people are ways in which, you know, if you're thinking about trying to, to find that extra money for the heating, are there things that people can, can oh, do to kind of change their, their energy costs? Definitely. Now, I'm obsessed yeah. with Yeah, what would you suggest? Costs. <laughs> I'm obsessed with electricity use because uh, the flat that I rent is all electric and electricity is about three times right. the price of gas anyway. So I'm, I'm always thinking about it. So the top three things that I talk to, to people about when I'm talking about saving electricity is um, look at 
your home, do like a little energy audit, work out in each room what's using electricity, does it need to be switched in and plugged on. Um, but there's other things, simple things like your tumble dryer. Now, I was talking to a client the other day who does, uh, does her ch children's washing on Sundays, does a few washes, but by the end of the day, you can't really hang it all out because it's the evening. So she does usually several tumble dry loads. Now, that could save you 30 quid a year, something like that. Possibly even more, depending on how hot a temperature it is and how often you use it for, actually, what your tariff is mm -hmm. costing you. Same thing with electric ovens. Even people with gas central heating, a lot of the time, have got gas ovens. Uh, sorry, we've got electric ovens these days. Now, what your oven is doing is heating the space around your food as well as the food itself. It's having to heat up all that air. So you want to make sure you're using that oven efficiently. Cook four things in it. Like the other day, we had chips, pizza, pie, and chicken nuggets all at the same time. So we could make these make some make sensible use of our oven. Most of the time, we don't mm -hmm. use it. Though. We'll use a slow cooker or a microwave. Um, and lots of people are using mm -hmm. air fryers as well to cook things like that because it's keeping the heat in and it's only heating small, small areas. Um, and that can make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Even things like... Uh, reducing the amount of time you spend in the shower no baths uh, if you've got all electric then how often do you actually need your immersion heater on that's the big hot water tank thing we very rarely put ours on at all um, we've got an electric shower um, and we boil water up to wash uh, do the washing up washing clothes mm -hmm. making sure that i mean you know it's a classic you wash your clothes at 30 degrees but can you put it on a short wash as well do you really mm -hmm. need to do yeah. as many clothes washes every week? You know, have a think about whether you can just air clothes sometimes, which will, again, make, make a big difference. So that's a few. So cribbing few back little bits. <laughs> yeah. No, it's really good. And another one, you know, is kind of, um, I, had, I think I, I mentioned in the last session, but going around and seeing how many bulbs you can replace with new led yes, bulbs absolutely again it's averages but you know if if the saving is sort of five pound per year per bulb and there's probably a hundred bulbs in the average home i don't know i counted 20 in my bathroom and kitchen last time didn't i so <laughs> looking to see if you can make those little savings might in some way then help with these higher costs of the gas because you you kind of um changing your budget there but obviously that is going to be a challenge for, for a lot of people and we know um that you know changing behavior takes a long time doesn't it so what are the kind of quick things that people can access in terms of support with these high costs there's been a lot in the news about what's going to come in terms of helping people um what are we thinking here the best things to kind of point to in terms of assistance for um sort of financial assistance rebecca what would you be saying there well the top at the top of my list at the moment is making sure you contact your local council and get their yeah. household support fund for this winter most of the households mm -hmm. that we're talking to are likely to be eligible and if you've got young children and you're claiming any benefits it's pretty pretty likely if you don't have access mm -hmm. to the uh, to the internet just phone the benefits team at your local council and ask to get them to fill out the form for you. A lot of them will do that for you. Um, otherwise, just Google Household Support Fund, the name of your local council. And if you're not sure who your local council is, again, you can just Google the name of the town or village that you're in and local council and it'll pop up. So that makes life a lot easier. Mm -hmm. uh, I can never remember because <laughs> so I'm, I'm on a border of two, so I always forget which one I'm in. Um, so that's a really, really good tip. Household support fund, and it's. Do you remember how much it is, Gareth? Is it about? Is it hundred pounds, something like that? But the local authorities have different pots of funding available until the end of March. So apply now, mm -hmm. get a bit of money. They will often uh, do other support as well. So they might have other grant mm -hmm. funds available. I spoke to a client the other day who I'd told to ring up about the household support fund. And they have paid a small energy debt off for him as well because they had some mm. additional funds. So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's definitely and worth you know, getting in touch with them about it. And you've got a similar one in Wales. And they'll also... We have. So top top tip, if anyone's watching from Wales, if, if you haven't heard about it already, is that the, the Welsh Government um, had the £100 winter fuel support fund available, um, which has now been increased to £200 in, in light of, of oh, the, the rising wow. cost across the board. Yes. So, so if you've already received it from local authority in Wales, you should automatically get the further, further payment. Um, if you haven't applied, 
just what Rebecca suggested there, get in touch with support services or, or visit your local authority hub or, or council office and money advice team and, and they'll be able to support you to apply to that. It is something you need to apply to, so don't, don't miss out in that sense. Um, the other thing as well with contacting local authorities, they may well be able to put you in touch with the energy company obligation department of that local authority if they offer one, not every local authority does, but that's where you might be able to find out about funding available for boiler improvements, um, you know, or energy efficiency improvements across the board, really. It's an assessment on the property and come and hopefully help with, with those kinds of things. And of course, um, a lot of the energy suppliers are, are, are closing their schemes or the schemes have closed now, but the warm home discount, which as it stands is 140 pounds off uh, a rebate towards your electricity um, bill over the winter months. There will be an update and announcement on, on whether that fund will increase. But the thing to remember is, it's again, it's something you have to apply to. It's not automatic for, for most people unless you're, you're a pensioner in receipt of pension credit, pension guarantee credit. The, um, the easiest way to do it is contact your supplier ask yeah. them they might have a website that you fill in some details you might be able to get some support from an organization to do that some of them send paper forms out in the post for you to complete but the earlier you apply the better and you know i said most of them are paying out 140 pound by by the end of march so a lot of them are closed at the moment but they open tend to open from september on so it's about getting in in there early ahead of next winter yeah. and uh, making sure you don't miss out on that um so we've got a question the other thing i remember we've got a question <laughs> yeah ah, great you, shall we wait till the end yeah. do you want to carry on <laughs> um no let's break it up we've been talking for far too we long we have uh so the question is from linda oh. what this is a good question because this definitely applies to me in my household what is the best way to dry clothes if you haven't got outside space or a tumble dryer mm. so Although I live in a ground floor flat, I don't really have garden. And sometimes I can just about put clothes area just outside the back door. But, you know, people walk past and it's not great. So generally, our best advice is clothes areas. So if, you, if there's a room that you don't use very often and you can open the window a little bit, just a crack, put your clothes on clothes areas and coat hangers in that room so the moisture that they're giving off is going out of the window. Now, that's not always ideal. I certainly don't have a room that I can do that in. So I will tend to put the clothes area in this room with me because this is the warmest room most of the time. It's got most of the space because I'm working from home. So I, I and I'm sitting around quite a bit. So it's usually about 20 in here. So I will also tend to do I won't do more than one wash a day because, that, again, that's another big tip because there isn't enough space to dry at all. <laughs> So definitely only one, one wash a day, um, clothes areas. So hang your clothes out as much as possible with as much space around them as possible. Don't dry them on radiators though. If you've got, I mean, I've got an electric, so definitely don't dry, dry your clothes over your storage heaters because they'll catch fire. Uh, but if you've got radiators, your heating is having to work harder as it's pushing the heat through the clothes. You're also producing lots of moisture suddenly into the air. We talked about this a little bit last week, actually, didn't we? Because, there's a figure, isn't there, for how many litres of water one load of washing gives you? Something like seven. Yeah, litres again, it's averages seven crazy. and a half. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Huge amounts of water. Um, the reason your clothes are so heavy is because yeah. they're full of water and it's got to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. So that is, uh, yeah, it's yeah. not easy, but that's, that's one of the best ways to do it. Not, I tend to hang everything on It's not an easy one. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, that's making sure that. that ventilation is there for that water vapor to go out you know yeah. is, is your best best friend in that situation because it'll avoid you know any any sort of uh, condensation and damp problems but i don't know you know it's a, it's a tricky one dehumidifiers yes going actually, to the yeah, that, i mean that's, that's often advised as well balance, actually yeah, yeah. Put, put your clothes in a room with a dehumidifier yeah. it'll suck some of the the moisture out yeah that, that is actually a very good tip thank you <laughs> i've forgotten about that one what what we but then you know, people might be worried about the cost of running that. But what we what we haven't done, what we haven't had time to do in this session is, and, and we haven't quite cracked being able to share uh, pictures or, or images yet, but we'd like to. There are these um, um, 
you know, again, we're saying websites, but you, you can sort of sit down and work this stuff out. But most electrical appliances will tell you how many units of electricity that appliance will use. And then there's calculators out there that you can put your power rating of your, of your dehumidifier in or your electric um, radiator in and it'll and your tariff details or your unit costs it'll tell you how much that costs to run for a week so again it's about being um you know can can you find out roughly how much things are going to cost in advance and kind of that should help with budgeting in, in some way shape or form but again so basically, it's, it's, you wanna, you've you not had enough time, time to yeah we're, we're going to run out of time in a second i'm just going to say just to if you're not sure how to find the unit costs that you're being charged if you, you have a sensible like me and you've got an, an online tariff so you can't lose your paper bills, <laughs> it will tell you. It'll, it'll say tariff information somewhere on your bill or on, on, the, on the portal that you're on with your energy supplier. Other than that, if you've got an actual bill, you usually find the first page is all a bit blah, blah, blah with the big number, the big frightening number on the front. It's the second page that's got all the information, which has got whether it's a, an accurate meter read how long the period you've been charged is for and how much those unit costs are. So that's where you find those useful bits of information. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, to, to kind of um, wrap it up a little bit, hopefully we've given some ideas there for tips for sort of weathering the storm, um, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> I'm saying that because I'm worried about my roof blowing off any second. Um, but well, I'm, I'm quite pleased I'm you know, on ground floor. <laughs> yeah. If the roof goes, I'll be, I should just, be okay. I need to kind of make, a, make some sort of storm shelter. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, really, obviously, it is going to be incredibly testing in terms of budgets. You know, yeah. it's, every household is different uh, and it's about looking at, at what's available to you. First and foremost, if you're worried about your bills, speak to your energy supplier. You know, yeah. um, they have a range of support um, they can offer. Uh, it's thinking about payment methods, explaining bills, getting energy efficiency advice. You know, make them, um, you know, work for you in a sense. Yeah, We're absolutely. paying this money to energy suppliers. Yeah, don't, don't there there are some call. charges that go into. Yeah, and often, you know, if you get through to, to good customer service, you know, you can get all that information. I know that can be a challenge as well with, with the cost of calls and things, but Obviously, do a lot get of them are moving to online support. Yeah, we'll get yeah. This as well. and there are other support agencies out there. You know, if if you're worrying about um, uh, about arrears building up on your account and not being able to afford um, the bills, there are things like breathing space. There's obviously um, national debt line, citizens advice, step change, you know, a range of organizations that can help um, with, with all kind of money advice and, yeah. and debt support. Absolutely. And there are support uh, mechanisms through the suppliers as well, energy trust funds and things, which we'll go into in a little bit more depth. We, in, and we in, will in, have in to do that session. another time because we're, we've been chatting on for a bit too mm -hmm. long now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Easy to but do. hopefully, you know, yeah, easy to do on this topic. It's yeah. something that a lot of people are, are suddenly waking up to. Uh, and, you know, that's why we're saying now ahead of that price cap coming into effect on the 1st of April, have a look at your bills and have a look at what, what your costs um, potentially can be. Have a chat with your supplier and, and get that support. And again, we'll be posting this video up to, to our YouTube channel. And if there's any questions that you think of, um, that you'd like to, to get in touch, you can find how, how to get in touch with us through our, through our website and through our, our media channels too. So I guess it's just left for me to say thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. And Rebecca, thank you. My pleasure. Um, we will do another Instagram live session in, in a couple of weeks' time. Um, I think we'll have a think about what topic, but again, if you want to hear us talk about a specific issue, um, leave us a message uh, on our channels and we'll do our best to, to provide some information, some tips that can help. Lovely. Thanks again. Excellent. We'll Thanks very much, Gareth. Rebecca. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thank Take care out there. Bye. Bye.